for the drums. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Keith. What you got today? We're coming back with the first mental model. All right. So um, we'll probably release these two episodes in conjunction so that folks mm -hmm. can see, you know, what are mental models. And we covered that just a moment ago. This then is uh, the very first of these Tableau uh, mental models. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I have in mind here uh, is that we can talk about this thing we refer to as the Tableau query process. Okay. I have some ideas of what this might be, but let's see what it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, the mm -hmm. main idea, like the, the big invention mm -hmm. that came out of Stanford so long ago was this VizQL thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to the VizQL thing was this idea that you could just kind of drag and drop pills onto the canvas uh, and not have to write your own SQL. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of people take for granted that Tableau just does this thing. And so this Tableau mm -hmm. query process mental model is really to just kind of uh, pick apart what is that, what's happening there. Mm -hmm. Like there's a shorthand of, yes, we're dragging and dropping and it's generating queries. And there's so much more to it. Like that, that's the elevator pitch of the movie that there's so much more to VizQL. So yeah, so let's dive into it. Okay. So uh, first thing, before we get under mm -hmm. the hood with this mental model, mm -hmm. it's a relatively simple one just to identify mm -hmm. what is this thing called the Tableau yeah. query process. Um, I want to throw you a little bit of a curveball and begin uh, at the very beginning. Okay. So first I just mm -hmm. want to ask you a question, Jonathan. All right. <laughs> What is data? All right. Um, uh, to me, data is units of things we are measuring. And those, those units have uh, a whole variety of attributes associated with them, which might be units of other things. So I, I love the diagram you have there because it's kind of this universe of, of stuff that we're looking at in the, and there's a, and it looks sort of like the diagrams of the, the Bohr model of the atom. So there's this atomic nature of it. Yeah. There's this really data. atomic, atomic mm -hmm. nature of it. Right. And mm -hmm. I think it, I think it's super important before we get into scaffolding up one mental mm -hmm. model on top of the other. And, and as we're kicking off here into mm -hmm. season two, um, that we just begin on the ground floor, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we practice this thing that's called uh, data visualization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We're professionals in this, in this thing. Um, and to me, it's worthwhile to begin just with, with you know, understanding what is this stuff, this data mm -hmm. thing, this data stuff that we're working with. So I have, I have two mm -hmm. definitions here that I found. Okay. Uh, and I believe that both of them are, are germane. And it's kind of interesting, your answer to the question, I would fully expect that if you were to pop this, pop this surprise question on mm -hmm. anybody that you would meet at the Tableau conference, it would be really interesting to just mm -hmm. take a survey of the different types of, of definitions that people have. So I've got mm -hmm. two. Okay. Uh, the first definition of data is, is more of kind of like a, a dictionary definition. And I think it's, mm -hmm. it's in the vein of what you were getting at. Mm -hmm. The data are these facts and statistics that have been collected together for reference and analysis. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we can get into modeling data and we can put these mm -hmm. facts and statistics in this table and this, these over in this other table, and we can connect them with noodles mm -hmm. and meatballs and, and joins and unions. And we can, Mm -hmm. We can just work with these sort of atomic collections of facts and statistics that have been collected together for, for reference and analysis. That, mm -hmm. That's one way to define this, this stuff that we work with every day. Yep. Okay, but here's this other definition that I believe is also mm -hmm. quite germane. That data are um, these quantities, characters, or symbols 
upon which operations are performed by a computer. So this is kind of getting to that sort of a deeper level of what is the representation of those facts that we want to analyze. How does the computer think about them? Mm -hmm. That's right. It's just these characters or symbols that are, that are stored on a mm -hmm. hard drive for operations to be performed on them by a computer. Mm -hmm. And I think it can be really helpful to hold both definitions in our mind as we, as we work through these mental models and as we work through these difficult circumstances sometimes with all mm -hmm. of the forest that you could get lost in with Tableau. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about in season one, we did all of that stuff about, you know, one equals one relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, we did all of that stuff around sparseness and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and what happens when there isn't a record present, you know, for every mm -hmm. unique combination of dimension members that are in the view. Yep. Right. Uh, the, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that there's various different types of null, right? Like Tableau mm -hmm. only has one null, but if you really kind of parse it apart, there, there's maybe three or four or five different circumstances yeah. that, that each are, are different in their own special way, but Tableau just mm -hmm. calls it a null. And so all yeah. of those kinds of problems are really more germane to this definition of data, that, that there's just mm -hmm. some, some characters or symbols that are stored on a computer that operations are attempting to be performed. And, 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 and so mm -hmm. these are these two definitions that I have of, of what is data. And, and to the thing you mentioned in the first episode of how these mental models are about us aligning with the tool. This is what you're sharing here with the symbols on the one hand that the computer is using and then the, the facts and statistics that we're going to analyze that are a little more human graspable mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. This is that place of we're living in this model but sometimes to do what we need to do, we need to be in this, this model with that. So, um, so my kind of go-to example on that one is um, uh, case sensitivity in computers mm. as a model, where sometimes we're working with something and whether it's uppercase or lowercase matters, and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that for us as human beings, we can read a line of text and we don't care what case it's in. Mm -hmm. We're going to understand it, but the computer cares. The computer cares. Times. It's not going to do the yeah. join if, if the case mm -hmm. uh, sensitivity isn't lined up. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Another one that I think about a lot are like um, different fonts can cause problems. Mm-hmm. Right. Because because the so, for example, we do a lot of work at Apple and, and the little ASCII symbol for the Apple logo mm -hmm. just isn't present in all of the fonts. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or, yep. you know, the Tableau class of fonts are treated as a first class citizen and they're sent through the HTTP payload to the web browser. Uh, but your mm -hmm. other corporate font um, might not be on the local uh, kind of client uh, computer. Mm hmm. Right. And so and so these yeah. are the places where the characters or symbols that represent the facts and the figures uh, might be causing glitches with nulls or mm -hmm. case sensitivities or ASCII characters. Um, and mm -hmm. so and so these are these two definitions of data that I think are, are really kind of relevant to hold in our head mm -hmm. at the same time as we begin to scaffold and look at the way that we can do this uh, practice that we call mm -hmm. data uh, visualization. Mm hmm. No, oh, this is great. Okay, cool. So, yeah. so we'll get next to, um, I think I've got a whole mental model on how Tableau prefers tidy data. But while mm -hmm. we're here just talking about what is data, mm -hmm. what does it mean when we say that data is uh, tidy? So here we're looking at a data set with countries and years and what looks like case, cases. So maybe some sort of disease cases and population data. Some mm -hmm. very large population numbers there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so um, to me, you know, we, we talked in the, in the first episode mm -hmm. of this series about wide versus tall mm -hmm. and just what kind of a, a challenge it can be if your data is not in the mm -hmm. right shape, right? Tidy data, um, just to define it here, we'll go into a whole mental model about it in the future, mm -hmm. is this really important shape of the data 
that facilitates that iterative query process and facilitates that cycle of visual analysis to keep us in the flow state. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this data, you're right, it's just a simple little data set that has country mm -hmm. and year and cases and population. Mm -hmm. um, what it means for a data set to be tidy, and Tableau really prefers mm -hmm. tidy data sets when you can yeah. get them, is it means that um, all of the variables, the things that can vary in the data, they're mm -hmm. all stored in their own, in their own column. So every variable has its own column and the things that vary, uh, you know, each in its own column. Mm -hmm. And so what that doesn't mean is that one thing that varies is spread across multiple columns mm -hmm. or many things that vary are in a single column. That's not tidy, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. And, so the, and so the variables in the data set are each stored in columns. And then um, the observations of those variables each get their own new row. Mm-hmm. And then yep. naturally, then it, we would conclude that, that the observations themselves then are in, are in the cell um, that is the intersection of those rows and columns. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. So Ray, I, I, I think I've had to internalize this from when you first shared that with me. Um, and this is a diagram I, I use in all my trainings and talking about it is the, the observation is that kind of what is that core unit of analysis that we might be aggregating higher than that, but where are we starting from with that? And that one of the places where data starts falling out of being tidy is when we look at that we have multiple observations in the same row of data. So for example, instead of a row for each year, we had years as columns in the data then we have, an ob we have an observation for each year as separate cells in the same row, and then Tableau doesn't like that so much. Downward spiral, the, the kind of arg mm -hmm. frustration problem, right? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, all of this is just kind of building up to this first mental model of mm -hmm. the Tableau query process and what is that thing. Um, and I just, I just thought it was important to put this here, and I like that you're hearkening on mm -hmm. the observations uh, mm -hmm. Because when we get to look at your grand totals uh, material, we're going to be talking about whether or not the particular computation that we're using is looking at the observations or whether it's looking mm -hmm. at an aggregate of the observations. Um, yes. And so, and so these things are just, are just mm -hmm. really helpful to, to have in mind. Um, and we've got also this cycle of visual analysis, this iterative process where we're kind of getting some data, performing a task, mm -hmm. getting an insight, uh, sharing it with others, bouncing around mm -hmm. inside of this thing. And uh, this, to me, is really what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what we want to be doing is facilitating that process in order to kind of move quickly through time and just make it all happen super fast. Yep. And that piece about time is really key because what the the reason why the kind of goal of Tableau from the beginning was to improve cycle times in decision making. And that the faster we can go from having a question to seeing a representation of the answer on the screen, whether that's the right answer or wrong answer, at least it's an answer that can let us get, use that as feedback to go into the next thing. And then you get that virtuous cycle of efficiencies mm -hmm. and cycle times to decisions um, compounding mm -hmm. upon themselves and the impact to the organization can be really huge. Yep. Yeah. So one of the things Joe Mako said that always resonated with me was about Tableau allowing him to fail faster. Right. I love it. And yeah. by, by having more failures, he was able to get to those successes with the data. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, to present this first mental model, this kind of mm -hmm. tool that we can have in our toolkit, uh, when mm -hmm. we think about what's happening when we drag and drop canvas mm -hmm. uh, pills onto the canvas in Tableau. So, so this big invention that came out of Stanford so long ago was this thing called VizQL. Um, and when we work with it, we almost don't even think about it. You know, we're just, we're just dragging and dropping mm -hmm. pills, right? 
Um, and you've really, you know, kind of been first and loudest to advocate that there can be so many dozens of things that are occurring in the query pipeline, in the order mm -hmm. of operations, so many different things that are coming kind of like magic out of the Tableau mm -hmm. monolith that, that are all instantiated just by dragging and dropping a pill onto the canvas. Yep. So among all of those things that occur, one of the primary and most important things that occurs is that a query is sent to the data source. If it's, if it's a relational database, some kind of uh, SQL query is sent to the data source. If it's, if it's some mm -hmm. other type of database, a different type of query is sent to the data source. But this is kind of among the, the magic that happens when you drag and drop a pill on the, on the canvas, is you don't have to write your own SQL. Tableau uh, takes the arrangement of pills that you've placed onto the canvas as a specification for the type of query it should author. And Tableau composes the query that goes to the data source based on your arrangement and selection of pill types on the canvas. And so then, most importantly to me, in terms of the language that we use all day, every day, just to kind of get our vocabulary mm -hmm. kind of square here in the beginning of these mental models, um, is that the result set that comes back from that data source is some kind of aggregated result set. Yep. So if the, if the definition of data is we've got all of these facts and statistics that are collected together for analysis, then, and we've got one new row for every observation in that underlying data source, then the level of detail of that underlying data set is most likely to be a deeper level of detail than the results that come back uh, as this aggregated query result that comes back from the query uh, that has been composed by Tableau when I dropped the pills onto the canvas. Yeah, which is, uh, for me, that's a core part of what we want to do as analysts, as visualizers of data. We don't want to see 20 million web hits. That that's just can't make sense of that. We want to see, okay, how many web hits were there per hour for each hour after publication of our five different articles or something like that, that we want to see maybe a few dozen data points or like on the scatter plot you've got on the screen there, there's probably like what, four or five dozen data points being displayed and there might be thousands, millions, billions of records underneath that. Right, yeah, yep. and, and that's what we do. We're sense makers, mm -hmm. right? And so, mm -hmm. and so the, the process of making sense of all of that deeply granular underlying data with all of those observations, mm -hmm. you know, one record for every item in the basket at the checkout when there's 20 million, mm -hmm. 20 million items running through. What we want to do is we want to summarize and aggregate that data and we want to present sensible kind of summary values. Mm -hmm. And so to me, the main kind of a key takeaway from this mental model is that this is what's happening under the hood when mm -hmm. you drag and drop a pill on the canvas, is that there's some deep level of detail in the underlying data source that's defined by the number of records. And, and if the data is tidy down there, you've got one new record for each observation of the things that vary in each column of that data set that you're connecting to. Mm -hmm. Your arrangement of pills on the canvas is going to be the specification for a query that Tableau composes on your behalf, uh, which means that you then are in control because you can change the query that goes to the data source by, by rearranging or redefining your specification mm -hmm. of the pills. And then the result set that comes back from that query is an aggregated or summarized um, subset of uh, the original data source that has been aggregated to the level of detail that you've defined. Uh, and we'll get in other future mental mm -hmm. models around, around how that works. Yeah, one thing to, um, to add to this, because I know like we're going to have some new people to Tableau watching this series, and they'll be like, OK, well, let me just see the SQL that Tableau is issuing. Mm. And you can do that by looking at the Tableau logs, um, doing performance recordings in Tableau. But there's a, a piece of this that Tableau tries to be really smart about this process. So when we're dragging and dropping fields 
in Tableau, not every time we drag and drop and do something, are we going to get a query to the data source? So there's a way we can think that it's a query to the data source, but Tableau is being smart. So like if I've, um, if I've got like region and my state or province in the view, where region is a, some group of state or, states or provinces or a set of them, and I remove state from the view, Tableau probably isn't going to need to requery the data because it's already got everything in that local cache and it's being smart about that. So there's a lot of optimizations that Tableau does to stay really fast so we can stay in that flow and that cycle of visual analysis. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and that's the next thing that I really wanted to call attention to here mm -hmm. is that the results of that query, that aggregated result set is being stored in that local cache of query results. And then from there, I can rearrange the pills on the canvas. Um, I can run table calculations, which are further aggregations. Mm -hmm. um, I can, you know, turn things into attributes. Mm -hmm. I, I can remove state, like you've mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's not necessary for Tableau to go back to uh, the original data source unless I make some kind of significant change to the dimensions of the measures in the view where a new query is now justified or needed as the result of the change in the specification that I've made. Mm -hmm. Up until I make a, a, a query changing modification to my spec on the canvas, everything else that I do after that is running against this local cache of query results and that local cache mm -hmm. of query results is an aggregated data set that is some kind of summarized subset of the, of the original data set, unless I happen to have, with my query specification, chosen to drill down to the deepest level possible mm -hmm. that was in the original data. Yeah, and to add to that, because we're kind of talking about Tableau Desktop here in terms of local cache, when we're talking about um, Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud, there's actually multiple layers of caches that that tableau is doing so if we're if somebody's on a visualization and, and they want the same visualization that somebody else just got served up two minutes ago tableau is going to retrieve the visual specification of that visualization and not even hit the data cache yeah that's, that's right there. that's all right it's, because that that rendered image is already available to the server it doesn't mm -hmm. even need to go re-render the same image because somebody else just ran that dashboard 30 seconds before you and it's already rendered that mm -hmm. image and it doesn't even need to query the data set or uh, render the visualization. It's already got mm -hmm. that, um, that image tile cache. Yeah, yeah. So there's this way for me in, in kind of taking this that I think this is a really, in that sort of all models are wrong, some are useful. Mm -hmm. sort of thing that this is a core thing of like essentially this is what's happening when we're doing it when we're first starting up tableau for the first time that day like tableau desktop and we're querying things hitting the data for the first time this is what tableau is going to do yep and i just think i just think that mm -hmm. um it's really useful to have this sort of framework and this kind of mental model as our mm -hmm. starting place and especially as one that we can refer back to as you take us deeper into your series on uh, analytics data models, mm -hmm. grand totals, uh, all of this stuff with mm -hmm. um, table calculations, right? Um, these are the types of safety nets that we just want to be able to fall back on and be able to refer to. Uh, there's mm -hmm. this thing called the Tableau query process. And what's happening now is we're, we're getting stuff from the local query cache, um, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a way we could, I'd, like, I'm just thinking this out loud here, but we kind of could come back to this view sometimes. Sure. Like this particular side and then overlay some of the other mental models on it as we put them in. Right, totally. To, to kind yeah. of like continue mm -hmm. to build out our map of the territory. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, like when we're talking about aggregation and like when we get into table calculations and, okay, what is the table that a table calculation is using, for example? It's that local query cache. Is yeah. that local? The, what, so what are those query results? Or what? how do those query results change when we're using measure names and measure values versus not? Or we're using multiple marked cards and multiple axes. Like there's, there's a lot of richness in this that I think we can have fun with. Yeah, totally. And a long way yeah. to go. This is the mm -hmm. first of, of count them 11 or 12 mental mm -hmm. models. 
Um, and yep. and uh, so thank you for accompanying me on this one. Mm. Uh, yeah. And um, we'll see you next time for uh, mental model number two. Yeah, this has been great. Thanks. Look forward to the next one. Okay. See you soon. All right. Bye. Wait for the drums. Thank you.